Hello, this is the AI Lab. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Nuno Souza e Silva, a law professor and a lawyer. Nuno acts frequently as an arbitrator, advisor, and legal expert for companies, governments, and international institutions. He published four books and over 50 articles on intellectual property, IT law, EU law, and private law, and has taught and given lectures in Portugal, Germany, Hungary, Poland, Denmark, and the UK. The reason? A recent Kluwer Law blog post by Nuno, in which he asks, are AI models weights protected databases? And which basically looks not at the input or the output of AI, but at the models themselves and their relation to copyright. Let's hear what Nuno has to say. So Nuno, there has been quite a bit published so far about the possible intersections of AI, artificial intelligence, and copyright. And they have mostly focused on the input level on the one side, so training the data, and at the output level, so basically what is generated by AI uh, models. Your blog uh, actually looks at the model itself, and more specifically, the potential copyrightability of the weights that are attributed within the machine learning process. So first question is a simple question. What are weights in an AI model? Well, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, as a preface, I must say that I, I, I'm not formally trained in this. So yeah, if you receive uh, angry emails from engineers, the fault is mine. But after that uh, disclaimer, uh, well, models are basically tools that humans use to simplify the real world, to boil it down, to describe it. And the way that this is done is through functions. Mathematical functions describe the world. And a neural network um, is sometimes described as a function approximator. So we have reality represented through a, a data set, a bunch of points in that data set. And what we'll do uh, is uh, by using a neural network, that is a network of neurons, run it so that it is able to uh, approximate reality through a function. Of course, it needs enough data, otherwise, you get you approximate the problem of the Indian parable of the blind man and the elephant. Everyone has a bit of the piece and a, a characteristic, but is not actually approximating this. That's why we say machine learning is data hungry. But then it uses a neural network again, a, a network of neurons. Neurons are very simple fun functions that take into account a set of inputs and that produce an output. And if they follow a quite simple formula, which is inputs times weights plus bias equals output and therefore what the weights are are numerical values one or many for each neuron that represent the strength of the connection between neurons so basically it, it's a way to influence the probability of a neuron firing when uh, confronted with a certain set of inputs these weights can be coded by humans but uh, um, most often uh, they are found by automatic means, that is machine learning, using an algorithm of backpropagation, something that adjusts the weights and the biases to achieve a, a better result, a better feeding of the data. So it kind of goes through and says it's actually an elephant, not uh, given all that we've seen. So to, to, to sum up, weights are nothing but a set of numerical values that represent the strength of the connection of neurons in a neural network. OK. <laughs> I like it when you say to simplify, <laughs> and then you say a very complicated sentence. Um, but so basically, um, it, it's kind of the secret sauce that is used to influence the result of a neural network by giving more importance to certain elements and less importance to others. And as you said, it can be influenced directly by a human or by an algorithm that is obviously also written by a human, but that means that it's a bit more disconnected, let's say, than to an individual the, the, intervention. The weight adjustment then will be done automatically by running that algorithm, the algorithm. for a long time. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay, now we know what weights are and we feel already a lot smarter today. Um, can you explain why you think 
the EU database directive could possibly apply to AI models uh, in certain cases. And, and if it does, what would the consequences be? So um, the database directive, uh, that there's no counterpart to it in the US or pretty much anywhere else in the world, uh, as was um, created by a directive in 1996. And the aim is to protect the investment in the creation, uh, um, presentation, and verification of data. So basically data products and the producer of data products. Um, admittedly, this had not uh, 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 AI models in mind. However, it requires further protection, uh, two things. You need to have a database and you need a substantial investment in uh, uh, at least one of these three activities, the uh, acquiring of the data, its presentation or verification. Now, um, the first requirement that there is a database um, is to it, to my mind, possibly satisfied by the very large collection of weights that is uh, um, basically one of two parts of the model. The other part being a run file that will actually implement those uh, models in a neural network. And it's arguably the hardest part to uh, 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 swallow because traditionally it had been said that a database uh, needs an index function and it's uh, sort of an internal structure or organization that allows you to retrieve individually each element. But if this is a file and you can search for it, maybe that's satisfied. The second element, which is a substantial investment in obtaining, verifying, and uh, presenting the data, that seems to me uh, uh, beyond discussion. We know how much money and effort is put uh, into developing a model and that the model really is the weights. Second part of your question, consequences. Well, first thing is that at least in the EU and for EU-based companies, and this is very important to stress, uh, this won't apply uh, to open AI, apparently, and uh, other companies that are based or Anthropic or other companies that might be based in the US. Um, but for um, EU-based companies that qualify, that means that they have a right to control the reuse or extraction of a substantial part of that database. In other words, I think this will mean in practice a right to control the use of the model beyond contractual rules. So basically, that means that copyright is not just a question that needs to be answered when it comes to input and output, as, as the current discussions are doing, where you know they're saying, well, can an AI be an author? But that we can expect <laughs> in the future that people will bring arguments about copyrightability at a database level, and that mm -hmm. the type of discussions that you mentioned and the type of, you know, Will this argument fly or not? We we are likely to see happen too. I would very much like that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, I, I think so. And uh, again, we're seeing improperly called open source. At least some people say that if we want to talk about open source in AI, it needs to be both the disclosure of the training set and the model weights. So it's companies speak about open weights. And it's funny if you go and look at the way this is being licensed right now as um, with different licenses for the run files and for the weights. So apparently there's also recognition by companies that are making this available that there's a difference in nature between these two components. But uh, um, if you really want to enforce open source, you need an exclusive right behind it. Well, I think we, we, we're going to see exciting times in terms of uh, copyright discussions and, and AI. And uh, let's hope that they both preserve the, the work that goes into AI, but also allow for the innovation that we hope that AI will bring uh, to us as a society. Thank you so much, Nuno. Uh, I encourage everyone to read uh, your blog post. I also encourage everyone to check our uh, podcast with Professor Samuelson because she also talks about, um, amongst many other issues she talks about, I think is, is about curated data and the fact that, you know, 
that could be under uh, business secrets or trade secrets for US law. Um, and I think that links to your idea also of the weights. And uh, thank you, and I look forward to continue reading you on AI and copyright. Thank you so much. Huge pleasure.